Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Nick Henschel, COO at American Tours International, ATI. And we look forward to sharing with you uh, what's new and cool in two really fabulous destinations in Southern California, West Hollywood and Santa Monica, which we've paired together to create a really um, uh, unforgettable getaway for your customers. Uh, so we're going to um, speak to Sean Kelly Holokai, uh, who is the Vice President of West Hollywood uh, for, for Business Development, West Hollywood Tourism Bureau, that is, and Todd Mitsuhata, who is the Director of Global Business Development for uh, Santa Monica Tourism. <laughs> Definitely. Thanks, Nick, and uh, happy to be here with you as well, Todd. Um, but, you know, for us, you know, it really has been a, a, a wild year uh, in 2020, but uh, 2021 is, is looking a lot brighter, especially as the state is opening up and L.A. County is mirroring what the state is doing. So uh, with that, um, our city is, uh, is celebrating Pride Month, as Nick talked about. It's going to look a little different, not necessarily a parade or anything like that, but really activations throughout the city and really just encouraging um, visitors, uh, local and um, and visiting in from out of town to uh, really just um, enjoy yourself at one of our popular bars, restaurants, um, and, and really just walk the city. It's very walkable. It's 1.9 square miles. So really, it is uh, very uh, much something that... Um, uh, uh, would be great uh, for you to for you to enjoy and really um, just explore and kind of spread out in the city, right? Obviously, you have your main thoroughfare of Santa Monica Boulevard, where uh, Pride normally usually is and takes up a lot of the room. But um, this year, because of everything, we kind of want to manage it a little bit better and, and keep things um, uh, a little more spread out as, as we continue to open up and things develop. So um, very excited about that. Um, second, oh, sorry. What about, um, so after June, after um, this next month, and it's, I, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of both locals and people visiting to celebrate Pride, what, what are the kind of new developments that are going to be happening later on in the summer in West Hollywood and maybe some of the 
um, also new uh, activities or, or I, I think that some new hotels have come online um, uh, over this last year that um, some of our audience may not know about. Definitely, yeah. Actually, this in, in 2020 we had a lot of activity of construction and 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 new um, uh, both hotels and restaurants coming into the market. Um, as Nick alluded to, our uh, wonderful Pendry West Hollywood by Montage just opened uh, uh, beginning of April. So uh, they are on the legendary Sunset Strip as well, right next to the Mondrian and the Andas. Um, at the former House of Blues site. So it really is a unique property in that um, it has a bowling alley, uh, a music kind of private club, um, uh, rooftop pools, and, uh, and as well, Wolfgang Puck uh, made a return back to the legendary Sunset Strip. So he has two wonderful restaurants there. Um, and there's, uh, there's residences attached to it as well. So it's really uh, an impressive site, um, uh, kind of capping the Sunset Strip. Um, and then if you go towards Beverly Hills, um, uh, we have the addition West Hollywood and they just opened a little over two years ago, but um, because of the pandemic and everything, you know, things uh, had to change a little bit. So, uh, you know, we're excited that they're open as well. Um, so really just a lot of, a lot of new hotel uh, supply in the market. Uh, something for everyone, honestly, is what I say throughout the city. Um, and then secondly, um, we had a, a wonderful restaurant called Bottega Louie open up on Santa Monica Boulevard um, that uh, has been doing extremely well. Um, it has an on-site bakery as well as some wonderful food. There's other restaurants throughout LA um, that Bottega Louie has, but this is their newest one. Um, and then lastly, uh, a lot of our hotels and our, and our bars and restaurants, the rooftop uh, options there. So you can have expansive views and you can be outside and enjoy yourself um, at the bars or the restaurants. So really kind of that quintessential LA experience in West Hollywood um, that we like to say um, uh, that is available to you. Yeah, I love uh, that the rooftop pool experience that um, is pretty easy for any um, person staying at those properties, whether it's the Pendry or the or um, the um, addition, as you said, or, or some of the properties that have been around and have beautiful pool decks for a long time, like the London and the Mondrian. And they, um, they offer an experience that I think is kind of that hybrid of we're out to, you know, celebrate the summer and getting, um, you know, uh, post COVID, but also not being like inside and crowded in a club or something like that. It's, uh, you're still outside and being able to enjoy the vistas that really West Hollywood offers of all of Los Angeles, right? And and you can even see Santa Monica, actually. So that's a great segue um, to, to you, Todd, um, and uh, to explain a little bit to our audience today about what's new uh, in Santa Monica, which is uh, not very far away, as some of our audience probably knows, but um, one of the things that connects this whole theme to our Drive America program is, is really the drive from West Hollywood to Santa Monica and the various uh, routes that you can take that are all pretty world famous, whether it's Sunset Boulevard, um, Wilshire Boulevard, San Vicente, um, all of them are really iconic within um, Southern California and kind of an experience into, unto themselves, right? So I'm gonna, um, you know, as, as we take the audience through uh, Los Angeles, hopefully not in too much traffic because we're still, you know, doing okay on the traffic front, depending on when you're traveling, we're gonna travel west to Santa Monica towards the ocean, and maybe you can share uh, a little bit about what's new uh, there and with our audience today. Sure, well, really excited to be on the webinar. Thanks again for, uh, for having us. Um, yeah, I think in line with what you said, obviously we're, we're connected by Route 66, uh, neighbors in LA, and I think it's a great way to re really experience the best of LA, Santa Monica and West Hollywood. Uh, but in line with what Sean was saying, actually for this month, for June, for Pride Month, um, we have some art installations that are going on on Third Street Promenade, uh, Santa Monica Place, and the Pier, which are all in our downtown Santa Monica area. So really happy to, to see that going on. I think some, some really cool art installations and things happening around that. Um, also kind of similar to what Sean said, I think, you know, we've always been a destination that has been known for our outdoor activities, really nice al fresco open air dining experiences. And I think we've seen really an expansion of that during the pandemic. Um, having you know sidewalks and parts of the the city almost rezoned to allow for more outdoor dining and really just making use of that great weather that that we both have uh, in our destination so that's been really exciting to see uh from the hotel perspective 
Uh, the Double Tree Suites by Hilton has been renovated and that recently opened, it's actually a month and a half ago as the new Hilton Santa Monica Hotel and Suites. Uh, so that's brand new in the destination, really excited to, um, to be able to see that open. And actually I did a site inspection of that uh, about a week ago and, and really, uh, really nice property there. Um, and then from the experience perspective, you know, a lot of really um, great outdoor activities. So we're obviously a destination that's really known for the wellness uh, scene and you know, everything from beach yoga, starting your day maybe with a meditation class or yoga on the beach. If you want to do a spinning class, there's spinning classes now you can do on Santa Monica Beach. We have a, actually a new company that's doing beach picnics. So they're called Santa Monica Picnic Company, and you can do an elegant curated beach picnic with uh, professionally designed furnishings and kind of kick back on the beach and do that. Um, and then we've seen a lot of interest in these wine tours that actually go up into the Santa Monica mountains. And I think that's another hidden gem. A lot of folks don't realize that we're close to uh, Malibu and, and the Santa Monica mountains. You can go up there and do a, a private wine tasting outdoors and enjoy PCH and some of those, you know, iconic roads that you talked about. And, um, yeah, those are some of the new things that are going on. So. Great. Thank you. And I love that you alluded to um, PCH and the drive up to Malibu because we are talking about, you know, a Drive America package that we've created um, in conjunction with, with you all and, um, and really showing the best um, uh, and uh, experiences that there are and including them in the um, package that our uh, travel advisors are able to easily book or to change and to customize. And so some of the experiences that you talked about, Todd, we actually have contracted in advance and offer at a discounted rate in the package like the um like the beach picnic for instance or the um or the uh, they can add the wine tasting in malibu so that's really a great point um and i in west hollywood in the hills we've had uh biking and uh, hiking um excursions that we've added into that we've included in the package um that can be of course changed to whatever kind of version um the the end customer um our our agent um uh, client would like but those are kinds of the, the excursions and activities that we include in our packages at a discounted rate because they are packaged along with the hotels that our um, uh, advisors are able to take advantage of. So I'm happy that we were able to um, talk about that a little bit. I wanna go back to what you mentioned about the restaurant scene um, right now, because I think that that's a really important um, piece in every destination right now after COVID to, to you know what's going on, because that's part of why people travel to a destination, right? Is to experience the, the food and the, the, the wine and, and, and the overall ambiance of being out and dining out. And one of the things you mentioned is LA um, was, uh, given how great our, our weather has always been, um, we did not have the same outdoor dining culture that people would have expected pre-COVID, right? We, did, we had outdoor venues, but not as much as you would necessarily expect. Well, now, we actually do. Um, because of COVID, they've added a lot of outdoor space. And now, um, as people have been able to start dining indoors again, it's actually added even more space, um, right? So it's a it's really um, interesting situation because what you've also seen is, yeah, there, there are some restaurants that didn't return, right? But the ones that are back or the new restaurants actually have expanded capacity. So maybe if you each could talk a little bit about that, Sean, you spoke about some of the new um, venues like Bottega Louis that opened up, but there's others that have added capacity. Now, I still think it's important that everyone knows to make reservations in advance, especially during the summer, that there's not gonna be the ability to easily just walk in, but maybe Sean and Todd, you could talk about more about that restaurant culture and what's, what's developing um, in these, what's developed and what continues to, to develop over these next months in your view. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, for us, uh, one of our brand pillars is culinary. So whether you're on the Sunset Strip or Santa Monica Boulevard or on Melrose in the Design District, there is uh, a wonderful restaurant that's either been there or has opened. Um, some iconic ones that come to mind are um, uh, Dantana's, uh, Craig's, Chaconi's, um, but also you have some kind of newer restaurants that have popped up in the last several years, EP and LP, uh, which has a great rooftop bar and restaurant. Um, Gracias Madre is an all vegan Mexican restaurant on uh, Melrose in the design district. Um, so really there, there is something for everyone. And what's unique about West Hollywood and our hotels is we really have some iconic restaurants in there as well. Um, so those as hotels have developed, um, 
uh, throughout the years or even most recently, they're, they're popping up some great restaurants and some partnerships, actually. So at the one hotel, there's Harriet's Rooftop with expansive views of L.A. and the, and the Hollywood Hills there, um, as well as an iconic restaurant um, at, at the Tower Bar at Sunset Tower Hotel. So uh, there really is something for everyone from sushi to Italian to American to um, French, you name it. So um, I definitely encourage you, as Nick mentioned, to get a reservation uh, as soon as possible if you're making your trip down to West Hollywood and on to Santa Monica. But you raise a good point, Sean, about the great restaurants that are actually within the hotels, that uh, many of which we offer, that we contract and offer package rates at, that, that that obviously makes it a little bit easier. As people, I think, generally know when you're staying at the hotel, you have better access to the restaurant. That's a really good point. And I think that that's true in Santa Monica as well, right, Todd? When I think about some of the, um, uh, like the Huntley, the, the restaurant on the roof there, or um, um, some of the other properties that have their own, like, really iconic restaurants as well. Yeah, no, most definitely. Um, the Huntley has the penthouse, which is a, a really amazing 360 view of the coastline of, of Hollywood as well. Um, Calabra, which is at the uh, Santa Monica Proper Hotel, also has an open air rooftop restaurant and bar, which is really iconic and popular. Uh, Hotel Shangri-La as well. And then um, the Georgian, which is a really unique Art Deco property, actually, I think during the pandemic, opened their veranda restaurant, which really just kind of goes out uh, onto Ocean Avenue with these really amazing views. Um, so yeah, certainly a lot for hotel dining. I'll say that um, the Promenade as well, which is obviously a really famous outdoor open air uh, shopping destination. A lot of those restaurants, Nick, to your point, have expanded outdoors. So they still have the indoor dining space, but now it's nice to be able to actually dine on the Promenade um, and do your shopping, do your dining there. So 1212 is a really um, a popular restaurant that's done that. Um, I'll say in terms of some of the more, you know, really popular restaurants, Elefante Beach House is one that I think even before the pandemic was known for those ocean views and kind of Southern Mediterranean dining. Um, but that's a great spot. And then of course the pier too. I mean, those, those restaurants really haven't changed, but you can, you can really have a, a nice, um, you know, affordable meal too on the pier and enjoy those ocean views. So, uh, a lot of different options, um, to be able to enjoy, you know open air in Santa Monica. What about on the beach, Todd? Like the, there's there's a few venues that are actually on the beach as well, right? But they're more during the the, the day, um, like kind of beach shack types of, of dining places. There's not really, is, for, for, for evening, you're kind of more up on Ocean Avenue um, or like you said, on the pier, right? Yeah, there's two that come to mind. One is called Back on the Beach Cafe, which is actually part of the Annenberg Beach House. And the Annenberg Beach House is the only public beach club uh, in the United States. Uh, so they're kind of getting back open, but the cafe there back on the beach has been open throughout the pandemic and um, is a really nice way, literally toes in the sand, casual meal, but you're right there uh, on the beach. And then Perry's Cafe has uh, multiple locations throughout Santa Monica and Venice. And you can also dine on the beach or if you want to do a beach butler experience as well and have like a, a butler to deliver your, your food and beverages out to you um, on the beach, you can do that as well. But those are two that are really uh, popular in San Monica. Great. Um, very cool. And so, you know, one of the questions I think that everyone's thinking about, because they've heard California has been closed, right? Um, the, but but we know now that California is not really closed. It's reopened. I just read that um, Warner Brothers, uh, their studio lot is going to be restarting the end of this month. Obviously, Disneyland's already open at limited capacity, but um, all of that's changing very quickly right now. So maybe speak um, a little bit to some of the um, developments as they come that are kind of post-COVID that are now, um, uh, whether it's reopening or if there are still some, you know, restrictions that that um, travelers and their their travel advisors should keep in mind when they're planning coming to Southern California, but particularly to West Hollywood um, and to Santa Monica. Sean, what, what, are you, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, honestly, I recommend, um, you know, uh, we have a lot of resources as, as an industry, as a tourism and in, travel and tourism industry. So Visit California is one. They have some great up to date um, statistics and kind of recommendations as you come to the state. Right. Um, uh, secondly, 
um, I would encourage you to visit each of our websites, um, whether it be uh, visitwesthollywood.com or I'm sure Santa Monica's website. We have some great um, insights there that all kind of follow along with the, the CDC guidelines as well as the city and the county guidelines. But um, from what we're told, um, we are in LA County and LA County will be following uh, California's kind of reopening guidelines. So those should mirror each other. Um, and uh, uh, from our understanding as well, um, it's very easy to, to um, uh, see the facts even at LAX if you're flying, you still have to wear masks and, and kind of social distance there per CDC. But um, definitely um, the rules are kind of uh, uh, opening up a little bit more as uh, the state and the county and our cities reopen um, uh, as well. And what about rates and availability as we talk about, you know, the demand increasing? What are we seeing in terms of the um, the kind of stay patterns and when people maybe could expect to get a better deal at a hotel? Um, is it going to be midweek because maybe some of the business travel hasn't come back yet, so they should be looking for their um, for their for their clients on a, a midweek basis? Um, do you expect that there's going to be a, um, a kind of um, crunch that causes a, um, a price increases um, across the board, or is that only in certain segments of hotels? What are your thoughts on on that to share with our our um, audience today, Sean? Um, yeah, I think you I think you hit the the nail on the head there, Nick. Um, you know, the as a business uh, comes back into market, obviously traditionally business is traveling midweek, um, and weekends are you know obviously our leisure guests, but um, that really has changed. I think for LA or just California in general, um, we uh, are seeing as as I'm sure for Santa Monica. Um, the summer is obviously our peak period, right? So, um, you know, that is ramping up as we speak just because of the, the great weather we have um, in, in Southern California. But I think there is great opportunity for uh, travelers, whether it be leisure or business, to, um, you know, come in on a Sunday and stay, uh, you know, over, over a, a weekday pattern, honestly. Or if you can come during the week, you'll get even better uh, um, opportunities for packages and, and some kind of inclusive uh, um, packages. But um, again, I recommend, uh, you know, if you can, to your point, midweek and um, weekends, if you want to come on weekends, we still encourage you to, but uh, it, it might be a little tighter. Yeah. And in Santa Monica, that's the same trend, right, Todd? 100% agree with, uh, yeah, with what Sean said. Uh, same thing here. Um, yeah, I think during the week, definitely a good opportunity to take advantage of some perhaps, you know, some lower rates there. Um, historically, summer has also been a really busy time for us. Obviously, moving forward, um, you know, we'll see what happens. You know, hopefully, you know, things will uh, be busy in summer. But, you know, also during the winter time is a good time historically to take advantage of um, would have been lower rates, too. So, um, yeah, I think right in line, though, with what Sean said. Uh, one of my questions um, that I think the audience would also want to understand is why why these two cities within this large metropolis? Um, what about like why is it better than some of the other um, you know whether it's beach city beach cities or um, or you know some of the other uh, places whether it's in LA or in Orange County or or even a little bit further north like what what differentiates um, West Hollywood and what differentiates Santa Monica? to both stay in um, and to really do together as well. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for us, I, I always say we're, we're the geographical heart of Los Angeles. You know, we're that uh, quintessential LA experience. You know, the celebrities play here, they live here. We have the Hollywood Hills. We're a uh, number one walkable city, you know, we're only 1.9 square miles. So um, it really is that kind of urban, um, new luxury kind of experience, right, that we're looking at. And honestly, we do say, go enjoy Santa Monica, um, you know, while you're here, honestly, because uh, the proximity, we're very close to each other. Um, and we, both of our destinations complement each other, whether it be during the day or at night. Um, but really, um, there's something for everyone. And that creates a kind of a, a longer stay experience uh, when you can enjoy two close, very different and unique uh, destinations is my, is my take. Yeah, Todd. Yeah, I think to Sean's point, it is really unique to find destinations like ours that are really walkable. And we are, we're also relatively small, so 8.3 square miles, about 20 minutes from LAX, but a great base to stay. Um, but as Sean said, you know, I think to be able to stay at your hotel, walk to most of those main attractions, shops, restaurants, 
have that car-free experience while you're staying in LA is really a huge advantage. Um, and I think we definitely share that in common, um, you know, but to Sean's point, we complement each other well, and we do have, you know, different, different things um, to offer. And obviously we're, you know, laid back beach city, you can stay by the beach, stay in one of the hotels, but, you know, go out and explore Santa Monica or, or other, um, you know, West Hollywood and Beverly Hills, Malibu, Venice mm -hmm. as well. So I think it's a great way really to get that, um, you know, the, the quintessential SoCal LA experience um, and really, you know, experience both and, and get the flavor of, of LA that way. I think that that's exactly right. The, the walkability of both of your destinations is really, um, uh, is really um, un, unmatched, right? And then the fact that you really are both still central within um, Los Angeles means that you can enjoy the other um, uh, cities as well as LA itself um, um, uh, while, while you're staying um, in, the, uh, in West Hollywood and Santa Monica. So I think, uh, I think that we've enticed the audience today um, mm -hmm. to come you know, stay in, uh, in, in both of your destinations and hopefully with uh, American Tours and to, um, to book one of our Drive America pa packages. This is really a more unconventional uh, Drive America package. You know, it's not uh, long road trips like we typically are talking about. But like I said, we've, we've paired together two really world-class destinations within a city and a region, frankly, that's known for its driving. And the last thing I'd like to say is you don't actually have to drive yourself anymore. There are plenty of public transportation options and obviously Uber and Lyft, and uh, those make things a lot easier for getting around, especially at night if you want to imbibe, you know, and, and not have to worry about um, driving. So I don't know, last thoughts um, before we wrap it up about the kind of drivability and how you can get around um, the, the region and between within and between your destinations. Yeah, you know, for us, uh, you know, we, we highly recommend the Uber and the Lyft or the rideshare uh, program. Um, if you have some clients or yourself, you know, looking to have, um, you know, a more VIP experience, we can definitely arrange some of the, the, the higher end car service um, or even a larger groups or, uh, you know, shuttle kind of thing um, into our city. Um, and uh, we're very close in proximity to Los Angeles and Burbank Airport um, as well. Um, and uh, honestly, when you're here, you can walk around. Um, and uh, we do have complimentary shuttles that connect a lot of our um, uh, main, main uh, areas of the city, like Santa Monica and Sunset Strip. Um, and those are getting back online now that things are opening up again. Um, and uh, again, I encourage to uh, take an Uber or Lyft down to the beach and, and enjoy uh, the great weather and, um, this summer is, is going to have for us. And honestly, uh, we welcome you to uh, come to West Hollywood and hopefully Santa Monica as well anytime uh, and uh, experience what Southern California and California is really known for. So thank you. Great. Thank you, Sean. Todd. Yeah, I think Sean covered it really well. I think, uh, you know, one other thing I want to mention about Santa Monica is we have a light rail line that actually comes into our beach city as well. So that's a nice way, you know, obviously um, drive into the, to the destinations, but if you want to hop on that train, you can get around LA and go to other parts as well. And you, and you talked about some of those, um, you know, the theme parks, Nick, being back open, you can actually get to Universal Studios on the Metro Rail. So that's something that uh, sometimes I think folks don't realize that that's that's available as well. Um, Easier than parking there. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, a lot of different ways to get around it, as Sean talked about. But, um, yeah, I, I think uh, we're also excited to, to welcome folks back. And, you know, uh, weather's getting warmer and, you know, our, our destinations and businesses are open and excited uh, to, uh, to welcome everyone um, to, to Santa Monica and, and West Hollywood. So. Well, thank you both so much. I think, like I said, we have uh, enticed our audience, I hope, today because uh, these destinations are so cool um, and, and hot at the same time, let's be honest, um, both, both literally and figuratively during the summer. But um, most of our um, uh, audience today are travel agents that are now you know, just trying to figure out where are they going to recommend um, their, their customers to go because they still, in large part, you know, there, there, there's some reopening. Um, uh, internationally, but it's still very confusing, right? Um, the cruises are maybe going to reopen in, in July, August timeframe, but you know, at, uh, there's, uh, the capacity is an issue. So we're trying to to work um, and, and influence and 
and inspire our uh, travel um, advisors to really um, book um, and, and plan those domestic packages of destinations that maybe are uh, uh, kind of like going to Europe, like going to the south of France and Santa Monica, uh, for example, but are, um, but are obviously here and, and, and um, very different maybe from where their customers uh, live. So I uh, appreciate both of you, um, uh, your time today and for this um, uh, campaign to inspire our, um, our, our audience and look forward to greeting uh, them uh, and welcoming them rather to, to Santa Monica and to West Hollywood this summer and beyond. Definitely. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Nick. Thanks, Todd. Thanks, Sean. Thanks. Thanks. you can book um, the package that we've created that combines these two world-class cities within a city. I'm based here in Los Angeles, um, which is, you may know, is a sprawling metropolis in Southern California that has so many different destinations within it, including Santa Monica, which is right by the beach, and West Hollywood, which is only a few miles um, inland towards the, the Hollywood Hills. And, uh, you know, typically the, the packages that we've created have been drive tours, have been destinations that are longer distances. But this package, which is also in our Drive America um, uh, uh, portion of our platform, is, is really a, a, a city package with some driving in between, actually some really iconic driving, whether it's on Santa Monica Boulevard, which is uh, the end of Route 66, or down Sunset Boulevard, which is world famous, um, or um, or down through the the freeway, uh, the the uh, 10 and 405, which um, may or may not be faster depending on the traffic of the day. So I wanted to first start by sharing with you how you can can book the package and how you can change the package that we've developed um, easily, changing the hotels or the attractions. So I'm going to start by taking you on to American Tours. Um, dot com onto our um, uh, platform, which you should be seeing now. Uh, and this is the home page. Um, and actually, you can see that we have two featured destinations. And right here, you can see that we have Santa Monica and West Hollywood featured. These will link to their individual landing pages that have a whole host of information and videos that you'll be able to to enjoy and learn about the destination. Um, it's really a, a great resource to see uh, what's new, maps about um, where hotels and attractions and restaurants are, 
um, and then some recommendations um, and insider tips, as you can see uh, along the way. And so we have um, both West Hollywood and Santa Monica featured um, on our website right now for the next month or so. And we hope that you will go on there and really um, learn um, some additional um, pieces of, of, of what's new and wh what's the best kind of experience for your customers in addition to the webinar uh, today. So those are um, two important resources for you. Then uh, on the Drive America tab, which I just clicked, that will take you to the, the package that we've created, which as I said, is really more of a kind of um, a smaller drive um, package. It's combining two destinations that are um, nearby one another, and they're both in Los Angeles. So if you search Los Angeles um, uh, in the greater Los Angeles area um, and um, make that search by going and, and um, choosing Los Angeles uh, on the, the tab there, then you'll see scrolling down that it's under um, Discover SoCal Splendors in West Hollywood and Santa Monica. And here you can see that we have two different versions. We have a standard version and we have an upgrade version. So I'm going to go to the upgrade version um, and check availability. I haven't put in a date yet. And you can see that it pulls up the detail of the, um, of the tour, which is three nights in each location in West Hollywood and then Santa Monica and um, it has some images for your customers. It has the itinerary with the recommend recommendations and inclusions um, within the tour. And I think what's most important to share with you today is that you can customize the tour. As you may have seen before, the functionality that we've developed within our Drive America platform is really industry leading when it comes to creating a, a, having a package that we've curated and then being able to customize it. Here you can see the map that showcases the two destinations. This one's taking you down to the freeway. The traffic may be too bad, or you just want to take the more scenic route on uh, Santa Monica Boulevard here, or as I said, down Sunset Boulevard to get um, to Santa Monica, uh, both incredibly uh, memorable drives. And now you can see, as I scroll down, the, the hotels that are featured in the tour, in this case, the Andaz, which is a really um, great Hyatt brand, very cool. Um, and it's right on the Sunset Strip, um, Andaz West Hollywood, which um, you know includes a resort fee. So all of that is important to note when you're um, when you're booking this for your clients. Now these are packaged rates that are really um, reduced uh, and um, uh, basically a value that you wouldn't be able to get on its own. So that's really important for you to know as well. We also include in this tour um, a, a celebrity bike tour with an electric bike in the Hollywood Hills. And a um, a and then when we go to Santa Monica, where we'll where we'll stay at the Shore Hotel, um, which is fabulous on Ocean Boulevard, overlooking um, the Pacific Ocean. Uh, and, and this this uh, package includes a partial ocean view room, also with a resort fee. Um, and then we also have included a bike rental along the the coast, um, along um, the the Will Rogers and Santa Monica Beach, which is. Uh, really an unforgettable experience. So the pricing is all here um, and you can uh, see that quite clearly. Remember this is all inclusive pricing. So it does have resort fees. It's not nightly, it's for the three nights. Um, and uh, and then what's I think really important to, to show you is the ability to say, you know what? I actually want to extend my stay in Santa Monica. So I'm going to go to change stay. And you'll be able to then change the number of nights. You can also change the hotel if you'd like to. But in this case, I think that the shore is a perfect place to stay. So I'm just going to add um, a night. And in this case, it is um, the uh, August date that, uh, that actually is perfect to be visiting. Uh, so I'm just going to add a night there. Great. And it is available. It is available for another $600, again, inclusive of resort fee, um, and that is uh, a pretty, um, you know, uh, good value for Santa Monica at the peak summer season, I have to say. Um, and so the grand total for this package now, and we have included personal um, digital documentation, which I think is really important for you to know that we um, uh, include that in all of our road trip or Drive America packages. You can also remove it. You can say that I don't want it, but we would recommend that you do have it because it does include all the destination information. Um, it's, it's something that's a really nice value add for not that much cost 
for your customers. So I put that back in the cart and you're re really ready to go at this point. If you wanted to add additional activities, this is where you would do that under add, add activity for, for each of these destinations. That's easy, easy to do. You can also add another destination at the um, in between or at the end if you wanted to go to Palm Springs, for example, or up to Santa Barbara. Um, that's also easy for you to do. But in this case, I think we're going to stick with the package with an extended night in Santa Monica, and I'm going to um, proceed to cart, and then it will be ready for me to easily book. Um, and this is, again, for two adults, um, and the, all the segmented um, pieces are in there. It will stay in some cases for a activity that needs to be confirmed on request. Our operations team will handle that for you and will confirm the day and time. So you don't have to worry about any of that for your customers. Okay, so I hope that you all enjoyed that um, a lot and want to thank uh, Nick for putting together this amazing presentation. And we have a little time left for questions. So we're going to bring Sean and Todd and their webcams up as well. And we will answer some of your questions. I know that we got some of them answered while you were, uh, while you were watching the presentation, but uh, I do see a few here. And so Nick, I think we'll just jump right in with those unless you, you had something else you wanted to add before we got to that. No, I think we should start with uh, the questions. Okay, Please. good. Okay, good, good. I, I saw one here about the Pendry, and there was a question about what kind of clientele would like the Pendry. Um, obviously, uh, West Hollywood is welcoming to everybody. So, um, you know, anyone who likes uh, something that's new and trendy and wants to try kind of the new kid on the block, I'd recommend uh, the Pendry. Uh, it is a montage brand, so um, you know the the price point's a little higher, um, especially kind of uh, opening um, the the grand opening. But uh, really, for anyone who's who's looking for something new and innovative, Wolfgang Puck has two restaurants there. So even if you don't stay there, you know definitely check out the restaurants, um, and it, it it is just a a great new addition to the Sunset Strip. Mm -hmm. Good, good, thank you. So I would um, also recommend actually, Lee, while uh, you mentioned the addition, Sean, that's another great new newest property that opened also on the strip, very similar to the Pendry, um, uh, overlooking all of Los Angeles and Santa Monica. Actually, you can the views are really stunning from up there and a uh, beautiful Marriott affiliated property, which can be booked by agents on americantours.com. So um, I think that that's also worth um, checking out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nick, let's take a minute and just tell me a little bit more about um, how advisors can work with ATI to put this kind of a trip together. Yeah, so, um, you know, what I walked through in terms of the kind of uh, example of a, a package that we've created, um, SoCal Adventure Package with uh, West Hollywood and Santa Monica, you know, those are kind of a framework, a kind of starting point to inspire agents to really be easily able to sell that to their customers, but it's not necessarily what uh, people end up booking, right? What we're seeing is that whether it's this kind of more, more simple package with some attractions and, and two destinations, or whether it's one of our you know, two to three week national parks uh, road trips, um, people end up changing, making changes um, and adding um, you know, their own um, uh, what they want to do. Uh, so, and some of that will, will occur outside of americantours.com for sure. We, we know that, but a lot of it, what we're hoping to do is have as much of that occur on americantours.com as possible. And they are package rates. They're obviously commissionable. Um, and, uh, and the, the discounts are really because we are combining all of these, um, these, uh, uh, you know, uh, attractions and, uh, transportation and, uh, hotels together. Uh, I know that there's often a question about, well, what about rental car? Um, we are going to be adding that at some point in the future. Right now, that would have to be booked separately, which is pretty convenient. I think in most cases, most um, agents have their own rental car preferred agreements that they uh, like to book separately. So that hopefully gives a kind of overview of where we're, we, we are. I, I hope that the, um, the actual, um, um, you know, uh, what I walked through was kind of uh, instructive to um, you know, everyone today able to see how what the functionality is 
it can obviously get quite complex. The more destinations you add, the more um, uh, activities you add and making all of those changes. Oh, one other point I think I did not mention, which is really important, is you can save any changes that you've made into your personal cart. And so it becomes your package really. Um, so what I had um, uh, created there by adding a night in Santa Monica, I could have then saved that as, you know, Nick's um, SoCal getaway. And that would be easily rebookable in the future, just looking through dates when you want to go back and say to your customer, hey, I just sent someone loves this, um, this, this trip and I, want, I think you should do the same thing. That is, I think, a really nice um, feature of what uh, American Tours, what we do, which is to kind of enable you to easily reuse what you've created for yourself, for your customers. Mm -hmm. Um, Nick, a, a couple more questions about using um, the, the ATI platform to book. So are advisors just able to book activities if their clients wanted to use points to book their hotels? Do you have a minimum spend? No, no minimum spend at all. You, you could book activities which are also commissionable. They're, they're um, wholesale you know, rates. Um, and because it's behind a login, um, it's, 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 um, you'll be able to access those rates. Um, you know, the only thing that we have a minimum on is uh, it came up actually during um, the one of the questions is our concierge service, which is really where we utilize our special groups teams expertise to go and do all those things that are kind of hard for you to do on your own, getting a reservation or special arrangement at a restaurant or at a museum. Um, those th that requires a $5,000 minimum spend, which you can see actually you get to pretty quickly when you're booking a deluxe package or um, when you're, you're doing a, a you know, two and a half, three week uh, trip around the national park. So it's not, it's not by any means hard to get to. And then our special groups team really steps in and says, what would you like us to do for you? Um, whether it's a private transportation on a, in a sprinter for a small you know, family group, or like I said, making a hard to get dinner reservations or uh, you know, access to certain venues that really aren't easy to, to access otherwise. Mm -hmm. And so are advisors able to contact you by phone if, if they, for whatever reason, don't want to use the, the interface? Sure, we have um, you know, our customer service team standing by 24 seven. They are more operationally focused. They're not really a reservation team. The whole point of building out our platform was to actually utilize the platform for bookings. And then if you have questions, you can email sales support at americantours.com. You can call for, for clarification, but not, um, our goal is not to you know, be taking reservations over the phone. That's not our model. It really is to make it easily bookable on um, our online platform. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, can most properties that one would find on your platform handle um, and accommodate guests who are physically challenged? I think that's a, you can check that off, right? And so it will only return those results. Yes, there there is a um, there is a, a, a checkbox for um, for um, access, accessibility. Um, you know that is something that is really on a property by property basis in terms of what they're you know uh, having to do, particularly around like what the the obviously federal, state, and local laws and rules are. Um, but we do have that um, that um, uh, search capability on our website. Mm -hmm. So I love this question because I think I'd like to to fly this way to Santa Monica. There was a question about whether the Santa Monica airport is open for charter jet clients. So do we have some insider in, intel there that we can share? You know, that's a really good question. I, that's not a question that uh, I've received before, but I believe it is. Um, there are plans in the future for the Santa Monica airport to kind of transition to essentially closed down and that that space is going to be rezoned for more green spaces in Santa Monica. So I, I will probably look into that and, and um, maybe get back to you guys, but I, I believe it is. I know there's still flights that are coming in and out of there. So. Mm -hmm. So Todd, I know you were watching the questions uh, as, as we were going through our presentation today. Was there anything there that you saw you wanted to, to bring up to everyone as it relates to Santa Monica? You know, I think um, most of those key questions, which by the way, there were a lot of good 
really good questions uh, from the webinar. I think we were able to answer most of them. I will say that I feel like James has a really good inside scoop in terms of uh, you know local tips because he was I think mentioning like the old King's Head, which is a really famous uh, pub and, and frequented by a lot of uh, you know expats from the UK. Um, so I was just impressed with just the interest level and the questions and some of the, some of the things that folks already knew. Uh, about the destination. So um, I feel like we've answered most of those, but uh, if there's any others you know, that, that people have, happy to happy to jump in and answer questions. Okay. Sean, what about you? I know you were answering questions as well. Was there anything you wanted to highlight or reinforce? Yeah. I mean, again, I would just say California is open, Los Angeles is open, as well as uh, my colleague Santa Monica and West Hollywood. So you know, we encourage you go to our website, visit westhollywood.com and, and, and Santa Monica's website too, and just learn more about the things that are that are available. The theme parks are open. I mean, um, there, there really is this new energy um, taking place. Summer is a very busy time for us. So if you have clients interested in uh, coming out this summer, definitely get ahead of it. Uh, we're, we're picking up as well as the restaurants and, and um, the activities are, are uh, being booked out farther as well. So um, again, please reach out to us if you have any questions and you know we're here to help you. Thank you. All right. Nick, this has been terrific. As always, I learn so much when I work with you and I'm so impressed with ATI and and all of the the you know tools that you have avail available for our advisors. So I'm going to turn it back to you now for you to share any final thoughts with our audience. Thank you, Lee. I really appreciate um, all you do to make these happen. And thank you, Sean and Todd, for joining us uh, today and for really, uh, you know, giving us the latest update on what's new in your really uh, fabulous destinations in West Hollywood and Santa Monica. I think it was a really important point that Sean just made. California is open. Southern California, all of California, but especially Southern California is open. You know, we are all here. Um, and I can tell you firsthand, you know, if there's any trepidation or concern about coming to California and not being able to enjoy some of the, um, well, why people come to Southern California, whether it's outdoor dining or, you know, uh, concerts or that is all happening now. And yeah, there's some changes about capacity or, or maybe you have to be a little bit more careful about making reservations. But all of that is, that's, a, that's a, a good problem to have in a lot of ways because it means that there's demand and there's, there's, it's, it's exciting and, it's, and, and people are wanting to be there and, and meet each other. And it's really gotten to a place where I think your customers are going to love staying here um, and uh, especially in West Hollywood and Santa Monica, which are really two hamlets within Los Angeles and, and Southern California that are the best places to stay, frankly, um, for a variety of reasons. The walkability that we talked about, the hotels that are fabulous, and um, you know the the people watching. It's all it's all really really good, and uh, so we look forward to welcoming you uh, here in Southern California and on AmericanTourist.com. Like I said, you can you know um, uh, create your own uh, package based on what we've already curated, or you can start from scratch, and that's kind of what our you know, a uh, unique selling point is and how we differentiate ourselves from so many others in uh, in the industry. And so thank you for joining us today and look forward to seeing you um, here in Southern California and on americantours.com. Excellent. Well, my thanks as well. And everyone, the replay will be up and available um, for a, a few weeks after the webinar. So if you want to review this information, you're going to be able to do that just by following the same link that you used to access today. So with that, we will wish you all a good day. Uh, let you know that we do have those social media memes that we'll be sending to all of you that you could use uh, on your website to uh, promote um, this, des this fabulous destination. And with that, we will wish you a good day and conclude the webinar. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks again. Bye, Thanks, gentlemen. Guys. Bye.